All right, James is going to teach us about proper chucking, correct? Hopefully. Hopefully, here you go. All right, um, this is a, a demo that kind of has been one I've, I, I, I get, I've been asked a lot or seen a lot of mistakes made in, in, in bowl turning and, and so that's, that's basically what this is, what I'm kind of, we're, we're gonna go over a little bit about, about safe chucking and, and what, uh, safe chucking a bowl and, and proper, proper chucking for a bowl. And I guess the biggest question I, I get to ask first is, can anybody here answer, what's the perfect size tenon for a bowl? A little bit of both there, actually. Um, there's two things you got to look at when you, when, you, when you have a bowl. I have a bowl here that is seven, a bowl blank that's seven and a half inches long, wide. Proper chucking for a bowl is usually, uh, the tenon is going to be somewhere between 50, 50 and one third and, and one half of the bowl. That's what you want for a good, solid, secure hole on your, on your bowl. That's only half of it. It depends on what your chuck can do. And when a chuck, when a chuck jaws are first made, they look something similar to this right here. They're cut, they're cut as one solid piece, and then they're cut apart to make this little gizmo here, and then four of those together, uh, make what is your whole, what is your chuck? And so when a chuck is being used, when it's back in this shape, it is giving you the optimal hold. This is why you need to buy as many chuck jaws as you possibly can. Um, because this is, this is where you're going to get your best hold for your chuck. The second it's more than about a quarter of an inch out, you're only holding on eight points. That's it. No matter what you do, you're going to hold on eight points. And it doesn't take much at that point to get your wood to come out of the chuck. And I'm going to demonstrate that tonight. Yes, I am. I promise you I am. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm going to do it safely in, 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 a, in a controlled environment. This is a uh, science. <laughs> okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> controlled. It will be a controlled kill for, the, for that purpose. Okay. But what I'm first going to talk about, like bowl history, bowl stuff. This here is the first bowl I ever turned. Okay. It is god awful ugly. Okay. Um, I, I didn't know what I was doing when I did it. It's, very, it's about one inch thick on the base. And the reason why it's, uh, you can see in this, let me see what we got here on, you go up top. Whee! All right, I don't know if we can see it. Right here, there's that catch and that catch. And when that catch happened, it's split right here. There's, there's, there's a little split where I can catch my fingernail on the thing. And it basically just came out of the chuck. And at that point, I could never put it back in the chuck. It was, gonna, it was just going to fall apart. So I'll pass this guy around. He's, uh, y'all can see he's really bad turning. Um, and the, fin the yeah, it's sanded poorly. It's, it's really bad. I didn't do a very good job on it. But I didn't know what I was doing. So I, I have that in my, as my defense. This... Um, 2006 would have been it would, it would have been soon after my birthday in 2006 so somewhere June 15 ish probably because uh, I know I said uh, my birthday is June 8th and that's when I, I got my first lathe for my birthday in 2006 now this is a, my stand I, I would say kind of my standard bowl shape that I do these days the the, the tenon is uh, a part of the chuck and if you when you when I pass this around you can look at the tenon there are no chuck marks on this. I did not read, I, I did not put this on. I, I don't have any kind of cold jaws. I didn't do a jam chuck. This is taken straight out of the chuck, finished, okay? Um, and this is what I'm gonna kind of make tonight, or at least play with mostly tonight. And that one, that one will go in the, that one's mine. This one will go in the, uh, the drawing for the night. And this is I cut, I, I, I did this example in, from, from a blank, this exact same size, so this is about what I'm gonna end up with tonight when we're done. But this is, it's poplar, it's uh, a little under six inches, I think, in diameter. Nice little set. Um, and I even signed it, which I don't normally do, so that's actually, you know, kind of a nice thing. So, first thing we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about, or we're gonna show is just mounting a, mounting a chuck and getting, 
getting a bowl going. I like using a screw chuck because um, I hate worm screws. I, I, I've always had bad luck with worm screws. Just don't like them. So I, I use screw chucks. This is the uh, three-in-one screw chuck from Craft Supply. Get it going at a slow speed. Hold it on there and then let it take it yourself. Stop. Do, do, do. And snug it up. All right. Okay. So that's, it's on there. Yay. Now there's a myriad of ways of roughing out a bowl. And I'm going to go over a few of them. And I'll show you a few different methods. Depends on who, who you like talking to or, or watching. Richard Raffin. He's a really good uh, wood turner. Richard Raffin uses almost exclusively a half, a half inch spindle gouge on the outside of his bowl. It's kind of crazy to think about and most people won't do it. But it's a matter of presenting the tool to where this, this wing here is cutting. And it's just a matter of in an arc, cut it right through the side of your bowl. Simple, easy. Way of just taking down, taking down the outside. A lot of people like easy wood. They work really well. I'm gonna stop, stop the legs. Now I'm at a reasonable, decent thing, so I'm gonna. Problem with easy ways is you get that nasty tear out. All right. Standard uh, half inch bowl gouge with kind of an Ellsworth style grind. Just a matter of simply coming in, doing a push cut around the side. Instantly nicer finish. Um, some people like doing a pull cut, which is you bring this down low. When you engage just the bevel there, pull it through and it just pull it back to you. Varying ways to cut the outside of a bowl. Pretty simple. Straightforward. Okay. So now I'm going to demonstrate a few different ways of cutting a tenon. Uh, these are going to be cut exceptionally large just because I want to show how to do it, not because of what they can do. Get you a nice flat. And then... Okay. So... When, when you want to cut it when you want to cut a tenon you need to understand what what tenon your your chuck needs and most chucks go up top I'm waiting on the camera people all right most chucks you want to know how much this is how, what the size of this space is here which most people it's about a quarter just right about a quarter of an inch so I cut uh, for this I'm going to cut a tenon that's three sixteenths of an inch deep um, and so for that one of the easiest ways to do that, actually, I'm going to use an easy wood tool first. Cut that square. Did I do this right? Where you get that, that ever so fun portion of guess and check, guess and check. Hey, actually, that's pretty spot on. All right. Good, a good chuck has it's going to have a, a dovetail recess, and that's where you get your best hold. If it's a flat draw chuck, you've got nothing better than a standard jam chuck. It's, it's got a good tight hold, but it's just a jam chuck if it doesn't have a dovetail uh, jaw recess to it. And so you want to match your tenon to match that dovetail. One kind of cute trick I saw with, with an easy wood that you can do is if you got your easy wood and you got your tenon set, if you just turn this thing to a, on the side, it automatically cuts your dovetail. 
and you got a nice dovetailed hold set up for your chuck. Now, I'm not going to use that one tonight. That's just that not a problem. I can show that again. Up top, probably. I would imagine they want up top. Okay, so we got it up top. So basically, all you have to do is just put it at an angle and don't get don't go too far. But turn to a 45, and now you've got a nice dovetailed because this thing's only going to go in as far as that little that little uh, th this this tool is going to bottom out. And by the time it's done that, you've cut it's, it's cut a really nice dovetail on it. Though now it's a little big, but that's fine. We're going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that. So, all right. Okay, what I, okay, so this is, like I said, a seven and a half inch blank. We're gonna do one, one jaw set at half of that, which is gonna be, what, three and three quarters? My math is good today, I hope. Yeah, there we are, okay. All right, when I cut a tenon on, a, on the bottom, on the back end of a bowl, or, or when I cut any kind of circular tenon, especially with this device and having having to match it up um, get in there thank you for me it's always easier to just first draw a random line somewhere on there because it's a whole lot easier to to match this up here to that line than it is to try to match it up versus center so that looks pretty close nope out a little bit more now I got to go in the center. Now that, for the purposes of this, that is definitely close enough. Okay. So now I want to shape my bowl to where that's going to be my tenon. So for me, I'm going to come in here, turn off the lathe, set this up. Okay. Get up to speed. You cut it and get rid of the bulk of it. Now I'll show I'll show with a using a spindle gouge. Uh, for cutting your tenon on this is side grain, just cut in straight. I want it dead even. I want it pretty even right there. Bring it back so you can scrape back towards you. And then when I, for me for cutting a and like I said, I do want to check to make sure I'm not going to go too far on this or f go far enough need to go in about another eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch sorry not an eighth okay and then for cutting the tenon in you want to just go in about fifty it's about a fifteen degree angle make sure you're nice and smooth here now, when I set up, if I was going to do a uh, bowl here, I usually like to have my tenon just to where it's cut like. And that's me. I'm surprised I was able to finish that cut, actually. Sharp gouge, yes. Okay. Still not quite fully round. All right. For this bowl, to the chuck I'm gonna, the, the tenon I'm actually gonna use is the second size in here, simply because of for demonstration purposes for this, that's actually the right, the one that will fit my, to fit this bowl perfectly once we get down to it. But and I want to give the the chuck the right, uh, faint, the right attempt. So I need to cut a bit of an OG on this one to get it to get it to get in that spot just right.
Let's see if I did this halfway as decent as I hope I did. Nice thing about the easy wood chuck. And actually, yeah, that works just fine. Okay. Take that off. Yeah, I got it on there just tight enough that I can't do it by hand anymore. All right. So, a lot of people that would say that's a good chuck, or that's a good tenon for your chuck. Only bad thing about a long screw, takes a while. All right, and I, f the one thing I forgot this th th this time to bring was a molly bar. There we are. Okay, that's up. All right. This is the three-in-one chuck. It's the, I think it's called the Apprentice three-in-one chuck from uh, Craft Supply USA. Uh, this one here, the three-in-one screw chuck, you can mount it like that. You can mount it if you've got a smaller piece but you want a little bit more support. You can mount it that way, or you can mount it this way. Um, they even have a larger plate that I have that I think is five and seven inches out. Um, fantastic little chuck, and the nice thing is, and you'll see later when I put this back on there, it's going to fit it's going to go back on this on that chuck fairly true uh it's pretty nice i brought this magnetic pencil holder so i would use it okay don't worry y'all are mostly safe I'm doing this for a different reason. I want to show why you don't do this. Okay. Chad, can you come up here real quick? Come here. I, 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 don't, want to, I don't want anybody to think I'm doing something. Tighten that down. Tight, tighten that down, please, sir. Tighten it. Okay. Hey, whenever, whenever you think it's sufficiently tight, that's fine. Okay. Now, right now, this chuck is biting r at eight points around the, around the around the jaws. It's n it's a, and I don't care what I do. I'll turn this down a little bit. It's out. It's not. It's not running true. There's there. It's it's not perfect. It's not as true as it would be as if it was a tight tight thing. Now, Chad's a. One of our younger gentlemen here, at least looks like a strong strapping guy. He came in, he came up here, tightened it as much as he could. And I could still get more out of it now because the, the, those, those corners have now rest relaxed. That the fibers have loosened up and it's, it's gone, it's gotten weak. And that's gonna happen on your bowl no matter what you do. Uh, Stuart Batty will even talk about, as I've watched him talk about that in a demo. Okay. Wee. Sorry, this this part actually is very difficult on my left hand. Cramps up worse now that I'm missing a finger for some strange reason. I don't know why. Ugh. Now this is a little gizmo that I made. Uh, I make a a, lay, a lazy Susan stand out of a four inch piece that's 10 inches wide. And so I get nice grain matching once I've made it round and I cut the, the bottom of the Lazy Susan. This runs through my, it's got a little thing and runs through my bandsaw so I can cut off one perfect one inch off the bottom. But for now, so I don't both abuse this poor lathe and uh, y'all get to see what, what's gonna happen. I brought this. Because I don't want to, I don't want to hit, I don't want to mess up the bearings on the on the lathe to do this. 
All right, let's see if I can hit the bowl, the, bu the bucket. Hey, okay, wow, I made it, made it more than once. You already see it. Actually, it's already, it is, it is come out already. I missed. Sorry. But this is what I call a chucking failure. And it has nothing to do with how, how the chuck itself. It was poorly turned. It, it, was, it was set to a way where it's going to break. The teeth broke, broke the wood out. And this is just a matter of it wasn't properly. It, it wasn't. It, that's what's going to happen if you get a rowdy catch and you've got that kind, any kind of gap if you're not holding it properly. All right. So that's phase one. Now I'm going to hopefully show you what happens if you get, get a rowdy catch on a and it's and it's chucked properly. <laughs> oh, I said. When I did that at home, the first time I hit it, it, it fell right off. I was expecting that to happen again. This is a stronger piece of wood. Oh, no, it's a standard demo. Whatever can, you know, not work the way you want it to when you do a demo. That's just it. Okay. Well, now I got to reset the tenon. That's always fun. So, but like I said, when you do, that's still running fairly true, even though I've abused the crap out of it. Um, turning a, I, I didn't talk about speed, and I should have. When you're turning, when you're turning anything, there's there's a there's a formula that is diameter times the RPM should equal between six and 9,000, okay? This is, like I said, a seven and a half inch bowl. Somewhere between eight and 1,200 RPMs should be fine. Um, especially if you're turning with easy woods. I've seen too many people turn easy woods way too slow. And one reason why they don't cut, cut efficiently or cleanly is, is just that. They're not cutting, they're, they're cutting too slow. So. What tool do I want to play with today? Good reason to wear a face shield. You will abuse yourself. All right, now I have to remeasure this because I don't remember what this, is, what the physical. All right, so if you ever, when you're setting up with your chuck, if you don't know how to, how to do this technically, most of the saw blades are about the thickness of one of these tools. So if you get it tightened down to where that is still removable, that's round. That's where you want to measure. And you want to measure the top where you can see this. You want to measure. I'm 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 measuring the middle middle jaw, which is right here. I want to measure from there to there. Do 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 do. No, it's too much. A little too tight. You want to get down. You want it. You want it to be in the base of it, so that way it's when you cut your recess the base is 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 where you're where you're measuring and so drawing my pencil line again and don't do that james that's not good right there for safety reasons and no i didn't do it on this one because they're brand new and i didn't play with it dull the, the far whatever your far side is going to be so that way it doesn't grab in as easily come back and gouge you in the back of the hand Yes, I've done that before. Safety minute, okay, situation there. 
Um, it has happened. All right, so now we're gonna come back in and we're gonna set up another tenon. Whee! All right. Stay. Oh. And again, stop your lathe before you move your tool rest. All right. And so I can say I'm doing this properly. Go a little bit deeper, but I, I need to get some width out, of the, some dimension out of the way. A little fast. Yeah, eleven ninety nine will work. Okay. This is one nice thing about poplar. It does cut, cut really quick. It's a great wood to demonstrate with for, for that purpose. All right. And uh, I'll show you some bad turning, or at least what happened from bad turning. These rings here, if you notice my tool is, has, has both a primary and a secondary bevel. I was off the primary and right in the secondary, and so it was grabbing funky, and that's what those rings are for. So bad turning. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. All right. Uh, three eight spindle gouge here, just different tool to cut with. Go a little bit. All right. Actually, uh, I'm going to show a skew chisel for this one, just because it's a different uh, another tool you can use. Um, and on this one, you don't want to be in straight. It, it's not quite a 70 degree angle. It's about an 85. So I want to come about right here. You also want to do this for two reasons. One. Set your bevel right, but you also don't want to engage, you don't want to be cutting on this side when you engage the bottom tip or the bottom edge to clean up that, that shoulder. Uh, Glenn Lucas sells a, uh, sells a scraper that he uses, that you can use for that. He doesn't always use it, but he, he does sell it and recommend it. In the class I took, one guy did that and engaged both things at one time, had a rowdy catch on the lathe. No one in the class, the rest of the class, used that scraper. They're like, nope, not going to do it. It's like, nope, not, not going to be that person. So that was kind of funny, actually. Um, so we're going to come back in. I'm going to cut an OG base so it'll fit in the chuck again. Ooh, that's ugly. I didn't get that angle good. Sorry. And I know this is a demo piece and why should I care? But I still want to cut, right? A little bump in that. That's why I got rid of that. If you ever want to know what a good if you ever have problems trying to figure out a good form for a bowl, get yourself a piece of string. This one's tied to knots, so I'm going to leave it that way so you got your top. Wherever this is going to hang, that's going to be the golden mean. That is, that is a, f a feel that when you, when you hold it up, someone's going to see it. If it's a big, deep bowl, that's the right size. If it's a little bit wider, shallower, this is the size you're going to look at. This, this form here is what's going to feel best and look best to most people when they hold a bowl, not the not a, not a, not a, you know, not the one that everybody has cut in their life where it's just a, I have this piece of wood that I'm going to do that with. And no one, no one wants that bowl. This, that my bowl is, that's why it's an ugly bowl. It's very, 
you know, just not a good bowl. All right, let's see if I cut this right or not. Oh, Got to open it the right direction, stupid. I'm very hard on myself, sorry. That's too shallow. So let I somehow cut that wrong. Oh well, I'm not perfect. Oh, I took too much off. All right, that makes sense. Well, we st we, we do this one more time. Classic. If it's if it can ha if it can go wrong in a, in a demo, it will. put the pencil line on there because the old tenon is still there or at least partially so I can see where I got to go wrong direction that was off a good sixteenth of an inch cut too much off my tenon And so I say I can say I did this the way I wanted to. Cut it again with a with a skew. All right. Where the fun stuff happens. All right. Did I do it again? Dang it. What? There's not nothing wrong with the chug. It's, it, 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 it's, it's user error, I promise you. I don't know if... It, this, this one has more jaws. And so I don't know if I've got one that'll fit it. And if it does, I'm happy with that. Either direction, it'll have... You know, if it, if it goes... If it, if, it, if it locks into the right jaw set, we're good. That one does. This chuck weighs about twice as much as the other one does, though. This is an eight pound chuck. The other one's right at four. Do, 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 do. Now, if I did this right, we're going to have this, a similar effect, but different. And there's a nice little piece of white wood there, right? That is a wood failure, not a chucking failure. That's you, you got it caught, and the whole tenon snapped off. And then, if you, if it pops out of your chuck, it's a chucking failure. If that happens, that was a that was a well well cut, precisely cut t chuck that's going to come out of your come out the way it should. And that's what if it has to come out of your chuck, that's what you want to see. <laughs> At least that way it was held as best as you can do it.
And that's where you're in the, you know, even, even, if, you're, even if it's proper, that's, a, that's also putting a pretty good force behind the, the chuck itself. So it's not going to happen easily. And that's also why um, the more jaws you can get, the biggest, that's the biggest jaw set I have, which I think is about four inches. So technically I can only turn about a 16 inch bowl safely with a tenon. Um, I mean, there's differences that you can do with recesses, but recesses on bowls are a little dangerous, or can be a little bit more dangerous than a than a chucking than chucking uh, can be. So, I'm gonna go back on here. We're gonna play one more. These now, I know I, I did. I wasn't just mean to uh, Easy Wood. They weren't. I said that's my that was a bulldog chuck. It doesn't matter. It, it's not a matter of the chuck. It's a matter of um, how they're properly cut. All right. I'm a little low. Okay. Should have done that before I... Let's see where I'm at. How much of this poor blank I've cut apart. And again, this is why I love uh, a dedicated screw chuck. If I had if I had used the worm screw from either one of these chucks, taking it, taking the worm screw out, putting it back in, these the, the bowl wouldn't run near as true. Doesn't matter what you got. So we're a little we're running about seven inches. It's good. Not complaining about that. Okay. Now, I'm going to use my little chuck here, for, but for a different reason. Show what, show what bad chucking is on a different reason. I have a lot of chucks. I have two of these. These are the BD-275s. The, uh, that's the BD-450. It's my bigger chuck. And because of what I'm trying to do in my with, with education, I own... Um, seven of these. Um, this is not mine. This is a was a Nova Chuck, and that was that was that's part of the school. And they have a nice dovetail as well. They have the this one has a weird little funky, like uh, bird's beak right at the tip, which cutting a, a good tenon for that seems like it would be very tricky to get that properly cut. Um, not a. Uh, I don't have Nova, so not, not one I'm familiar with. All right. Most of us have a jaw. Most of your jaw sets that you buy are 50 millimeters, which is right about two inches. And the top of this one is, is that. It's, 50, it's right about two inches. And so we're going to use that one. And I'm actually going to cut a very bad, a bad, a, a good tenon on a bad piece of wood. Go up a little faster. We're we've removed some diameter. Okay. That works. Three-eighths middle gouge works. Actually, give me the bowl. Let's get rid of a little bit more here. Okay. The fun, the fun with playing with all the tools you need. All right. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, this actually is too small of a tenon for this bowl. Um, and why that's important, or why that's, that's the small gouge. I don't want that one yet.
Now, I am not one who does, um, I don't have a, a tooled ground to a specific angle so I can just push it into the corner and it makes a perfect tenon. Um, you can call me an idiot if you want or whatever. To me, that makes you a tool pusher, not a wood turner. And there's the, the skill of wood turning to me is important. And being able to cut a good tenon with either a spindle gouge or a skew chisel or uh, you know, uh, even, even the easy wood requires more tool than just going, you know, uh, it's just, I'm passionate about what I do, so. <laughs> so all right, let's see if I did this one right or if I messed it up too. Now this is actually going on the top, the top jaw set. Feels like a good hold. Now I have this one, uh, this, this chuck is naturally comes uh, one, uh, one by eight thread. So I, I have a reducer on it, so it will fit onto this, both this chuck and on my nice little abusive contraption here. I'll have a bowl left, there'll be a little one. I mean, I cut this out of that same block. <laughs> That's about what we're going to have left. But it's this is really more about how many different ways I can have used one poor bowl. And again, it was cut right. Pops it right off. And but that that was more more in the aspect that would have happened worse simply because that's a small tenon and way too small for a bowl this size. You really want to try to get, if, if it was a, a larger, if I was cutting a, came off the wrong direction. There we are. That was the, uh, that, that's just not what I would want to be using for a bowl that size. It's too small. It's going to get, if you get a good catch, it's going to break even easier than one, one without. And that's, uh, that's the, the one thing I give Vic Mark, and they make, I believe they're the only ones that make Jaws uh, large enough to, to, to turn the bigger bowls. They've, they've got, I know, at least an 8-inch size jaw, so you can turn a 24-inch bowl on that comfortably on a, on a solid recess. I mean, on a solid, uh, solid tenon. Um, and they're one of the only companies that does make one. And that's why most of your professional bowl turners do use Vicmark. All right. Well, two things I want to do now. One is I want to get rid of that cruddy tenon. And I want to turn this down to about a six inch bowl. Poplar, poplar. It, it, it's a beautiful wood to demonstrate with. It turns very nicely. Not the prettiest of stuff, but it does turn well. Okay. Since I still have that tenon marked, I'm going to show you one more way to cut a tenon if you've got, if you want to have some fun with some tools, or one more way to cut a mounting. Uh, yeah, it's still a tenon, I guess. But a way of cutting your mounting. I 
um, that is a three eight three sixteenths uh, beading tool from uh, Easywood. Now most chucks are going to hold very well on that, so you can literally just come in here. Cut yourself a nice little bead and then clean up the base. If you want to make a nice a nice tenon to uh, mount on that's well cut well well supplied no I'm not this is not one I'm beating off this one's gonna stay on here hmm. something fun coming out of this piece it's always fun it's always interesting to see what you what you get out of wood so to keep the line I want to I want to basically not touch that but just get it to where I know where it's at and then I'm gonna cut kind of right next to it come in here do a little bit of an OG cut flat to get rid of. The nice thing about doing it with that, I know I, I, I with I know my my tenons are three sixteenths of an inch. This is a three sixteenths inch bead. I know I've got the perfect size tenon there. So If y'all guys want to see me cut the inside, that's not going to be near as exciting. I'm not going to beat up the poor bowl. Phone down, phone down. That's also one of the reasons why I like cutting on a on a, on a dedicated screw check. I don't have to worry about you know pulling the screw out to see if I did this tenon right. I can check it right here and right now. That looks great. So we'll pull this off. Mm-hmm. This is what I need to do. Uh, strengthen that hand up. Spin on your chucks nice and tight, nice and evenly. Right before you get to the end, give them one good flick, and that should hold your chucks ten and tight. You ain't got to worry about. Don't don't bear down on them, then you never can get them off. That one I should be able to get off pretty easily. All right. Okay, sorry, uh, Debbie and Jim. Y'all might get dirty. Just. I'm just saying, okay? And so, nice way to just, first things first, clean up the, the top, get all rid of all that ugly bark stuff. And the nice thing is now you've set up a, a, an easier way for you to enter, enter, enter your cutting. All right, setting up uh, the edge of a bowl, you do want to kind of see where I'm at. I didn't look at this before I started whacking away. Still got a little bit of bark here we got to get rid of. 
Okay. So we'll get rid of that real quick. Careful, that's hot. All right. Two things about about the edge of a bowl. It's always good to just take a little bit of that edge off because if you got a nice sharp corner there, that will cut and cauterize your finger faster than you can say, you know, mommy, it's going to happen. Um, and it's always good to have a nice, slightly uh, indented to the bowl. So that way stuff goes in, not out. Uh, it just, it feels good when someone holds it. They're going to say, oh yeah, that's nice. If you've ever watched Jimmy Clues, Jimmy Clues will talk about that a lot. And he'll, you know, it just, it feels good on the hand when you do it that way. And then when, so when I cut, use a spindle gouge just because it's in my hand. Come here. Just kind of round over the whole piece. Go back and round that corner over just because I don't want to get any more blood on this piece than I already have. All right, still a little bit. This lathe is a little short. All right. Right now I'm looking towards the outside so I can make sure that my inside path is gonna match the angle and arc that I want. and try not to make a handcrafted funnel. They don't sell near as well. Taking a little bit too much across the bottom. Hmm? Nah, not that bad yet. All right. It's nice when you get it. Normally, actually, I use I use uh, about here is where I would grab a, a heavy bowl scraper and refine the base. I just didn't bring one with me tonight because my uh, my toolbox already weighed about forty pounds with like thirty pounds of chuck in it. So, didn't need that. Now I've switched to a 3-8, uh, this is a 3-8 bar, quarter inch flute, spindle gouge, depend, or uh, um, bowl gouge, depending on what side of the pond you're on. British, th British quarter inch, American 3-8. A little bit of a, yeah, I know this is a demo piece. I still want to make sure it looks good. I can live with that. Like I said I normally bring a, I, I would normally bring a heavy bowl scraper. I'm not going to bore y'all with sanding tonight, but that is basically uh, a good way to turn a bowl. 
but I hope you got more out of uh, uh, more out of the chucking information I gave than whether or not I could turn a successful bowl. Oh man! Never mind. It's it's a as as uh, my grandfather always said. Some pieces are abandoned. It's out of the chuck now. I consider it abandoned, not finished. So, but. Um, if there's anything I hope you get out of this, it's, it's understanding the proportion that you need your chuck to be, your, your tendon to be, to fit properly in your chuck. More importantly than, you know, being able to cut a decent, I hope it's a decently bowl, a decent bowl, <laughs> um, is understanding, you know, if you have a chuck failure or if you have a bowl that pops out of your chuck, why it happens. Uh, a lot of times you see people grab these, you know, they, they have the chuck open as wide as it can go and they barely got a, a tenon squeezed on there. And I get it, you can turn that way, but a lot of times, it, it, especially the, 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 it, it, it's especially the best way to just set up for failure. Uh, set yourself up for success, cut a tenon that's proper to the chuck you're doing, even if you've got to do it multiple times. Um, that's, that's what it takes. It, it, it's what has to happen. Um, I'm not, uh, it's a, uh, I know there's a lot of people who do, who, you know, use them in big, in big things. And that's fine. If you want to cut the, ten, if you're cutting the tenon off, I guess it doesn't matter, but you're still having, you're still, you're still giving your, you're not using your chuck to its best ability. And its best ability is always going to be when it's as close to that circle as possible. And that's why, uh, that's what I'm, uh, I, if there's anything you get from that is go home and make yourself one of these. No. <laughs> This was something I had fun making, uh, but it's 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 getting the chuck, getting to use your chuck when it's fully gripped like this is going to get you the absolute best hold you can get. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, recesses. You're putting more. You're you're adding stress to the bowl and not taking away from it. Um, recesses are said. Don't get me wrong. I've made a lot of bowls with recesses, and if I'm doing a platter, I almost insist on it. Because you don't, you know, gri gripping a tenon on a platter, you've got that ugly thing sticking out. You can put a very thin, if you're, again, cutting a recess when this chuck is, when you want to measure for a recess, you want the chuck fully down, and you want to measure that gap right there. You want to measure that gap. Yes, the whistling helps. You want to me measure that gap right there and you want to cut straight in at that point and then put just a very thin dovetail, usually with a skew chisel on the out, you're going the outside to cut that in. And you're going to, again, you're going to be holding the entire grip of this chuck and not four points. If you're, if you're, if you're not hold, if you're not holding this thing, you're, you're, you're not holding on eight points, you're holding on four because you're only holding at the center point of each of these, of, e of each of your jaw sets. And there, it's even more of a, more of a danger than, than not, but it's, they, they, they work and they're fine. It's just to get a good hold, you get the stress out. You're putting stress outward on a bowl already. You catch it, if, if there's a, an imperfection you didn't know about, like, I guess I cut through it. There was a, there was a, a you know, some discoloration here. If that had been a, a, a bark inclusion or something like that, and I got to the point where that, that was now an, an active outside feature, like all that lovely burl you've got, if you did that with a some of those with a recess, burls have got the, the grain going so many different directions. Whammo! It's it's really easy to blow it apart. Um, and that's that. Um, I mean, the first bowl was a recess, and that's exactly what happened. I got a, I got a rowdy chuck. I got a catch, and it didn't pop out of the chuck, but it broke. It it split the wood so badly that I couldn't finish the piece, and so or you know, fit properly finish the piece. I, it, it's, it's finished. It was a change bowl for me for years. It sits in my office now. So, but that's uh, as, as an example of, you know, keep your first works because that way you can, you can look back at it and cuss yourself out with how bad you were at one time. Um, it's always fun. Yeah, everybody, I mean, and that's, that is the one thing about checking that everybody's got to look at. Um, what, what do you have and what they can do? Um, and getting the right size, depending on what, like I said, if you want to turn big, Get 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 a good big chuck. I mean, it's it, as much as it. Um, I've got pieces of of wood that I honestly can't turn right now because I I don't have the proper chuck to turn a bowl on them, at least not successful, not not safely. I can turn it. 
I, I just shouldn't. <laughs> I could. I don't. I, I don't want to. I, I, I do want to start coring. I, you know, I want to buy myself a coring system and do that. And when I do that, I'm going to get um, the, probably a Vic Mark and some of the bigger jaws for that purpose because it's just the best way to uh, a proper hold is going to is, is, is going to set yourself up for success in in the, in the grand scheme of things. Anybody else? All right.